Hey, Derek. Welcome to the Chilliwack Potter's House Friday evening service.
give our God another praise offering and thank offering. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. What a great God. Can you say amen? We're glad that you're here this Friday. Uh, we know that it's a big challenge for some of us to come. There's work, of course, and all of that. But we're very, very thankful that we can come and gather and have these revival meetings. They're just uh, t tonight, tomorrow night, and then Sunday morning, Sunday night. And uh, I'm thrilled. Our, our brother Derek come. Good, uh, good history between us and the Navajo Nation and all of that. And we thank God for that. We're going to have a great time, and God is going to help us. But thank God we can have church on a Friday night. Amen. I think the church is the most important thing in the whole wide world when it comes to coming and being a part. And, and I can tell you that we're glad that you're here. You that are online, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate that. We want to go to prayer. As you know, we're going to be supporting. We already are supporting quite a few works, but we'll be supporting quite a few more. And part of that is we're going to be in uh, uh, Georgia again. For two, there'll be two works in the state of Georgia or the country of Georgia, sorry, not the state. And uh, we want to also, we're going to be uh, in El Salvador. That's going to be a new work we'll be supporting. And also in a place called Kyrgyzstan. Can you believe that? Not Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan will be a, a new work. Plus, you know that we're in uh, Egypt, we support that. Serbia, all the different places, and then uh, we'll be, of course, investing in Mongolia as I go there, and all the different, Cuba, just tremendous, and we're very privileged people, but we need to pray for them. They're the poor. How many know we're the rich? We're very well off. Somebody's saying, well, the way things are going, maybe we won't be so rich. Well, <clears throat> it's okay, folks. We'll, we'll make it through. Hallelujah. Amen. But we're praying, of course. We want to pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. That's what the Bible says in Psalms uh, 112. Pray for the peace of Israel. So we want to remember Israel. We also want to pray that God will just bless these meetings. And amen. That nobody will wreck those new planted poles or touch them. Hallelujah. Until they set in. They're just all brand new stuff. Thank God, hallelujah, we can put a nice fence up. I, I'm glad it's going to be good. We'll keep our kids from running on the street. It's a good thing, hallelujah, and all the other things that it'll help, hallelujah. But we're going to call on the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for you that are online. We appreciate that. We're going to have a great, great time this weekend, hallelujah. Let's give God another praise offering as our brother Chris Snyder comes, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name, and we're just here to rejoice in you. We're thankful. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the cross, your precious blood, your grace upon our lives and upon this congregation. Yeah. And we just pray, God, that you'll just move in Israel. We pray for the peace of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem. God, give the government, to God, their soldiers, those in power, wisdom, God, to do the right thing. And most of all, we pray for the salvation of that nation, that they can know you as Lord and Savior, as Messiah and God. Give them that revelation and watch over them. God, we just pray all those that are sick in body, that you just touch them right now as we agree together, that by your stripes they are healed. We're speaking healing, resurrection, life. Touch them, heal them this very hour. God, we just pray for this revival, a special blessing upon Derek Klausche, God, that you just anoint him and use him for your glory and praise, that we touch uh, the saints and encourage us, and we pray that every service would build one upon another, that we'd see the saints come out, we'd see backsliders come out, we'd see sinners get saved, Lord, that you just encourage us and bless us, speak to our hearts, God, change us by the power of your word, the power of your blood, move in these last days in our hearts and our nations and our fellowship churches across Canada, we're contending for revival, we're contending for for breakthroughs, the people that we're working with. Lord, give us the love that you've sent from above that we could shed 
it into their hearts and believe God for miracles in their lives. We just rejoice in you. We love you so much, God. Just bless this service, God, and bless Pastor Klaus's congregation, God. Lord, anoint the preaching on Sunday morning. Bless his wife, his children. Just be with them. And we just thank you for this missionary all the way from the Navajo First Nations. God, we rejoice in that. We rejoice in you. And all God's people said, amen. Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. Here's your announcements. As mentioned, Revival continues tomorrow night, 6.30 in the evening. And uh, if you could come an hour earlier at 5.30 for prayer, we can just lay a real good foundation of praise and worship in the, the prayer room for what God will do at 6.30. And, of course, Sunday morning, 10.30, Revival continues. And uh, most of you know this, but the church is actually open at 9 o'clock. So you can come and we have fellowship downstairs, coffee. Sometimes uh, one of the ladies brings some baking. We have a good time. And we come up here for uh, Sunday school at about 20 to 10. And then, of course, the service starts at 10.30 with Derek Klaus G. And again, the, uh, as you see, we're putting a fence up. We, uh, we hired, like, a good fencing company. And um, if you could keep your kids away from, like, what's going on out there because that cement has to really harden up. And it actually takes a few days so even, even thinking about it will make them loose. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, just, if we could just not just go near it, and, uh, and we'll just, uh, as it progresses, we'll figure out the parking. God will help us, and everything will, be, everything will be good, and we'll have a nice fence around our church. Amen. Let's give God praise as our ushers come up this evening. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. The offering, it says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, and it says, One person gives freely, yet gains even more. And they that withhold unduly, they come to poverty. Now, those people aren't here, so don't have to worry about them. You've heard the people that, that give freely, and uh, God wants to bless us. So just remember that as you give tonight, and I'll get Gordon to pray. Thank you. We appreciate our musicians. We appreciate you. And it's a real joy to be able to turn this pulpit over to my brother. Uh, we come from totally different worlds. But the nice thing is that I go way back to the 1980s when he was just a little kid. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, I preached on the uh, uh, Navajo Nations. Uh, and uh, I go way back to some of those pastors, and we were talking about some of the cool things. He'll probably tell you uh, some of the canyons or whatever. Very interesting people. The Navajo Nation, the Navajo people are a very special tribe. They own uh, the biggest reserve in all of North America. It's called Four Corners. Huge, massive, and uh, we just thank God for him. He's the product of the ministry, Potter's House Ministry, way, way back. And, of course, Artie Aragon sent him out to be in Saskatoon. And we're thrilled to have him minister tonight. Let's give him a warm welcome as he comes. Hallelujah. All right, Pastor. Thank you very much. All right. I've heard louder welcomes at the hockey games. 
Come on now. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Whoa, whoa. You say hockey. That's the magic word. Oh, I got arms pumping over here, man. Oh, I haven't seen that for a preacher. Amen. That's a first. Amen. Good to be here with you. You know what? I so enjoy coming here uh, again, visiting you and ministering to you, preaching the word of God. I enjoy preaching. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have been preaching. My wife and I have been pastoring in the churches across the Navajo Nation for some time. Uh, we were sent out in 2006 in July, and we were on the res in different churches. And so, you know what? Uh, it's just such a blessing to be part of the wonderful, wonderful fellowship we have and part of the will of God for our lives. Amen. So wonderful. Who would have thought I'd end up in Chilliwack, British Columbia? Somebody called you guys the District of Columbia the other day on the res. They were saying, it's Victoria, District of Columbia. And I was like, what? I, I think you got it wrong. It's British Columbia, you know, they thought it was D.C., not B.C., amen, you guys are the, B I'm in the right B.C., right, amen, let me tell you, my wife and uh, kids bring, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, thanks for releasing, you know, our, uh, uh, again, just thanks to you guys, and appreciation and love to you guys, and uh, you know what, I had to leave them in the snow this morning, it snowed since Wednesday, Thursday, and it, it tapered off this morning as I was leaving. Nice cold weather, man. That's nice cold weather. And uh, one of the reasons I like Canada is, of course, y'all. And the other reason is the fact there are there are no snakes. Amen. In the prairies, at least. I haven't seen one yet, but a good snake is a dead one. That's my... That's my, uh, you know, uh, my mantra, amen, my mantra, my mantra. And so tonight, I want you to turn your Bibles, amen. I want you to come every service expecting God to speak to you. Because when you come with that expectancy, you know what? God will, amen. God will stir you. God will God would stir your heart, amen. And come with an expectant heart, amen. Don't let it just be another revival. Oh, he's going to preach. I know that scripture. I've heard it all, you know. Uh, but you never know. God, speak to me. Ask God. God, speak to me. God, speak to me uh, personally. And uh, again, let's put away our phones too, amen. Unless you have your Bible under, amen. Come on now, come on now. Let's put away our phones, uh, social media. This guy's a drag. Oh, man, send posts, you know. Here's a picture of him, man. Uh, but let's, let's focus on the Word of God without any distraction, amen? Amen. I heard you in the back there. That's point number one right there. We got that taken care of, amen? But there's nowhere else I'd rather be than here with you in church. Nowhere else I'd rather be. And tonight I want to minister a sermon called Shake It Off. Uh, years ago, my uh, parents, uh, they, they rented a house behind the police department in Chinle, Arizona, growing up on the res. And so it was this huge field that we were in, nice house, uh, middle of the field. And I felt secure because the police office was just right over there, you know, right, right in front of us or behind the house. But um, my friends and I, my wife always says, I don't have friends, but I've had friends all through my life. She always says, you're just a loner. I was like, I had friends, you know. <laughs> I have friends, I do, for real. And anyway, one day we were out, we were out uh, playing uh, in, the, in the dirt, you know. There's not much else to do on the res, so you play with rocks and dirt, amen. And the coat crates your dad brings home from work. And so we made mud pies, right? We made mud pies, and we let it set out for the day. And uh, the next thing you know, they said, oh, Derek, go get the mud pies that we made. And so I go to the back of the house, and I'm walking with the mud pies. And, uh, you know, our, our smorgasmorg is about mud pies, you know. We had apple pie. We had pumpkin pie, lemon meringue pie. And so I'm walking out there, and next thing you know, this ugly stuff slithery black snake comes peeking its head up out of the mud pies. The ugly thing. It was a garden snake or gardener snake. It's just a snake, you know. And it was non-poisonous. And I remember, and this is when I was a little kid. 
And I remember I, I, I freaked out. I threw that thing down. And man, a jolt of adrenaline shot through me like I never felt before. And I took off around the clothesline on the side of the house. I ran to the front, two seconds flat. You know, I was like, wham. And I was freaking out. And if I remember, I was screaming like a little girl, man. Because I hate snakes. How many of y'all hate snakes? Amen. The uh, other half of you will be praying for you. Amen. But I hate snakes. My mom hates snakes. I remember one day we're out shooting at the shooting range. And I remember my brother-in-law, this is at Thanksgiving, and that's when I was so thankful for guns. He picked up a target, he picked it up, and guess what was under there? A baby rattlesnake. And good thing, good old American... Uh, American laws allows us to have as many pistols and rifles and guns and cannons and whatever you can to fire, you know. And my brother comes along and goes, here, shoot it with this. 12-gauge shotgun. It was a little overkill, but I was like, sure thing. And then my brother-in-law said, no, I'll get it. And wham, you know, that, that, that thing shot into a million pieces, man. We couldn't find any evidence of the crime, but that was all right. I don't like them. Neither should you, amen. I want to open up with, this, with that story and read about Paul. Because Paul comes and encounters a snake, a viper, a venomous one. How many know the venomous ones are the, the diamond-shaped heads? Do you guys know that? They're, they're the ones that have the diamond-shaped heads, you know. Those are the poisonous ones, cotton mouths. And we're not going to get into it all, but uh, let me tell you, they're bad and poisonous. But let's read verse 1 through 6. We're going to read him here. Acts chapter 28 says, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta, and the natives showed as usual, unusual kind, showed us unusual kindness. This is Paul speaking after the shipwreck they had endured. For they kindled the fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. That's what natives do. Amen. They make you feel welcome. 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 And verse 3, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand so when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand they said to one another no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea yet justice does not allow him what well, does not allow to live but he shook off the creature and uh, into the fire and suffered no harm however they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and they said that he was a God. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Amen. Father, we come this evening, God. We are asking you, Lord God, to speak to us. Help us, Lord God. Shake off some things, Lord God, that have latched onto us that are toxic to us, our walk with you, my God. Deliver, I pray, many hearts tonight, Lord God, that have things latched onto them, Lord Jesus. We pray and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Let me tell you, if we're going to make it to the end, we are going to have to shake off some things. We're going to have to continually, daily, I mean, daily we have to go before God. God, forgive me of what I said. Forgive me what I've done. Forgive me of that thought. I mean, we have to shake those things off, and we're going to endure to the end. I mean, all oh, the end is in sight, amen. We are on the last stretch, amen. And Jesus is returned. The rapture's coming, man. And that ought to encourage you. And if you're discouraged because you're messing with sin, amen, get it right tonight. Shake that off because you know what? You don't know when Jesus is going to come back, but we need to be ready. And now is a good time, amen. People are calling, my wife calling and texting in the church and say, you know what? What must I do to be saved, amen? That's a wonderful wonderful thing when people start saying that amen it's a good thing during these times i remember 9 11 happened years and years ago wednesday night let me tell you the chinley church was packed was packed completely because people were afraid you know what's going to happen is this the end my heart isn't right with god and they came amen to church amen it's a good thing amen to get people rattled up and say you know what where's you where's your soul going to end amen in eternity and this is what we pray for and we need to shake some things up but we're going to make it i want to look firstly at this man on a mission 
God gave, again, Paul the mission to stand before Caesar. Acts 27, 22 through 24, it tells us that, Now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship, for there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord God, to whom I belong and I am serving, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must go and be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. God's plan for him was to uh, stand before Caesar. That is his plan, and God's going to keep him, and God's going to protect him until that happens and it comes to pass. How many know God's going to do that with you and I? When we step out in faith, he's going to guide you. He's going to help you. He's going to sustain you. Amen? God's going to help. How many believe God's going to help you? Amen? How many here because you need God to help you? Amen? All our hands go up. Amen? Because we need God to help us there's all kinds of things we are dealing with and those some of those things we need to shake off and we're going to examine that in just a moment or two but God had destined him I want you to stand before Caesar I'm going to keep you I'm going to preserve you the shipwreck happens and yet he's preserved the viper comes and bites him and injects him with the venom and nothing happens God preserves In my mind, I'm thinking when he got bit and he threw the snake off, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, the the venom all began to ooze back out, you know, and God began to push it out like a a little syringe and just took out the venom and uh, preserved him and kept him until he went before Caesar. Let me tell you, God's going to keep you and I as we continue on living for him. Amen. And he says, you know what? You're going to be saved. Your life's going to be saved. Those sailing with you are going to be saved and i have a mission for you i have a place amen that i need you to go paul gets bitten things happen how many know that's what happens in life surprises have you ever had that dreaded phone call that text, you know, and it just rattles you to the core and it just disturbs you. And let me tell you, that's kind of like the viper coming out of nowhere, this snake that comes out of nowhere and injects you with unbelief and then intoxicates you with all kinds of doubt just out of nowhere. How I many has that happened to, man? We go through life and it's like, wham, we hit a wall or something happens. Storms come, just like the one he endures. And it's all to discourage you. It's all to bring you back. It's all to cause you to step back and begin to question things. Amen. Just like Abraham. How many of you know on his way to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his one and only? I mean, you know, he had some days to think about that. He had some days to say, you know what? Maybe this isn't the right time or the thing of God. I don't know. And he had doubts. He had fear and uncertainty. And uh, let me tell you, as we go for God, amen, we need to remember and uh, encourage ourselves you know what god's got our back god has a will a plan for my life and we need to continue to forge forward god has a plan for your life first corinthians 2 9 one of my favorite scriptures how many know what the scripture says i has not seen nor ear have heard nor heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him See, God has a plan for every one of you. And you know what? It all depends on you. It all depends on you believing and trusting that and going all in for God and saying, I want to know what you have for my life. Back home, there isn't much to strive for, so to speak. You know what? You you have uh, laid out before you. The only thing you can do is go to school and go to college, hopefully, and get a good job. But I thought, you know what? There's got to be more. God, and when I got to church, man, it was like destiny, man. Destiny began to stir within me. I remember the first service I went to, never the same. When I went to the church in Chinle, man, it was like, man, you could feel something different man and I was thinking there's something different about this place and I remember God stirring me and drawing me in and saying you know what I have more for you and I'm thinking I don't know what it is but I'm gonna keep searching I'm gonna latch on so to speak to this amen and uh, lo and behold years later amen has brought me before you here tonight in Chilliwack not 
District of Columbia, British Columbia, with the beautiful, beautiful surround. You guys are blessed, man. You guys are so blessed. Look at the mountains, man. I got flat land. <laughs> I'm like, man, look at the trees are blossoming, man, all the beautiful colors on the trees, uh, you know, on the res. We don't got too many trees. Hey? We got weeds rolling on the road. Uh, that's a wonderful sight to see, amen, as the eagles say. Not so much, amen. God has a plan. What does he have for you? And God will preserve you and keep you and whatever it is. I'll look secondly at shaking some things off. Because this is the main point, the meat of the sermon, shaking some things off. Paul doesn't allow this thing to remain. He does not allow this thing to latch on and remain attached to him, infecting him with the toxic venom. I don't know, there's some people, I've seen some Christians, you know, you ask them, how's it going? And they go, Oh, well, and then, then, then you're, you're stuck there for 10, 20 minutes, and you're like, oh, man, what did I say? How are you doing, man? I should have just said hello and moved right along, you know, and it's like, you know, you know not, 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 not the tear in my beard, no, I call it here in, in Canada, the tear in my timmies, man, they're discouraged, man, they're so discouraged, they're tearing up into their coffee, man, Tim Hortons, you guys sure love Tim Hortons, man, everywhere, you know, and back in Saskatchewan, one. Everybody complains about Tim Hortons. It's not the same. McDonald's is better. And I'm thinking, okay. And they keep going back to Tim Hortons, man. I'm like, you guys are just complaining about Tim Hortons. You know, well, it's just part of us, you know, our DNA. And uh, a tear in my Timmy's, amen. Discouraged. People walk around spiritually with venomous vipers latched onto them. They come to church. How's it going? And they have all these things latched onto them spiritually. And they say, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. If you have an hour, let me tell you, woe is me. And it's like, bro, you got to begin to take some of those things and cast it off. Isn't that what the Bible says? Cast off some things that are besetting you, that are disturbing you that are weighing you down you got to throw it off you got to cast it off you cannot allow resentment and anger unbelief unforgiveness to latch on to you i mean that's a recipe for discouragement Oh, I need to take this for my depression. I need to take this for my anxiety. Let me tell you, how about Jesus Christ? How about you take Jesus Christ for that, amen, and begin to lose it? Let me tell you about my bout of anxiety. I've been there. I remember I was 17 years old, worried about the world and all the responsibilities at 17 years old. And I went to the hospital because I was shaking and my heart was racing and I was freaking out. And I got to the hospital, wonderful IHS, you know, remember what it stands for, I hate sick people. And I went up there to our wonderful hospital and what they gave me is they gave me Valium. Oh, about 17 years old. I said, here you go, take a couple, but well, since you're 17, you know, uh, just take one. And man, it calmed me way down. I never took drugs until I went to IHS, man. Never took drugs. And they gave me a whole pack of it, a whole bottle of value. Anytime you get anxiety, just take some. And if you need more, we'll give you some more. And I went home that night. And I made a conscious choice. And this is after I was saved a couple of years, 17 years old. And I, I, I said, you know what? I don't want to be bound to that. I don't want to have to keep taking a pill for that. I said, I'm gonna, I, I need Jesus to, to help me with my worry. And I took that uh, viper and I took it off. I took that worry off. And uh, yeah, you go through worrying bouts, but not as bad as it was back then. The only anxiety I have is if I have too much coffee, too much caffeine, then I start shaking. But let me tell you, we got to let go of some things. Don't let it weigh you down. There's, uh, you know, there's probably a fight that you had before you came here. Come on. You got to begin to forgive. You know what the joke between a husband and a wife is? When one is sick or one is hurting or one is ailing, I always tell my wife, just forgive me, dear. 
It's okay. Just repeat after me. Lord, I forgive my husband. Lord, I thank you for my husband. <laughs> the other day I had something. I can't remember what it was. And I said, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, she goes, forgive your wife. I was like, oh, get out of here. I cast that down in Jesus' name. No, no, no. She says, just forgive your wife. I was like, oh, man. As they say, make your words sweet because one day you may have to eat them. Amen? <laughs> Shake these things off. If you fought, get it right. If you have aught with a brother, you have a problem with a brother, you have a you know, disagreement, get it right and move forward again. I mean, oh, that can hinder some prayers for you. That can hinder some things that God wants to do for you in your life if you don't let go of those things. Isn't there a song called Let It Go? Do we need to sing it? You know, sometimes I sing a song inadvertently in the church back home there in Saskatoon, and the folks get a kick out of it. I say, oh, no, no, no more, no more singing, no more singing. Let it go, brother. Let it go, sister. It's hindering you. I went to preach in Africa a few years ago, and I remember I went to Kenya, Africa. And I remember uh, one of the stories about snakes. I mean, I've heard of the black mamba. And I'm thinking, I'm looking around everywhere I'm going, you know. I'm like, whoa, man, black mama's out to get me, man. I better watch out out, you know. You know they could stand five feet up high, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, man, those are crazy things. You can, if you get bit by a, a black mama, it says that you can, uh, uh, you can die within 20 minutes. A king cobra, it, you can die within 10 minutes. And I, uh, this is why I have the theology of a good snake is a dead one. You need to throw some of those things off in your life. Because let me tell you, they're as venomous, they're as deadly in your life if you keep letting them fester in your heart. How I many you know that the things that people have, the biggest problem is forgiving those who've hurt them? Oh, you just mentioned there. Right now, as I said that, a picture popped in your head of that person maybe that you have a squabble with, that you have a disagreement with, your neighbor. I love my neighbors, man. I love my neighbors. Because my neighbor across the street, he plows my snow when it's four feet high with his snowblower. I love you, Todd. Have a good day, brother. My other neighbor next door, wonderful folks watching our house, and we're watching their house. Wonderful. But maybe you don't have a good neighbor. Pastor had a gentleman come in, his neighbor. He says, thank you for the blessing. I think he said, let me show you the blessing that I got. And a good neighbor, let me tell you, a good neighbor. I mean, no, we are to love our neighbor. Didn't I read that somewhere? <laughs> love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. Come on, tell, say it with me. Love God. Love your neighbor. I saw some of you moving your mouth, but you didn't say it. <laughs> Love God. <laughs> Love your neighbor. Get it right. Because let me tell you, it's hindering what God wants to do in your life. Don't let it linger. I mean, you know, we see people in the Bible, Acts 27, Jonah 1. It talks about how they toss precious cargo over. Because they wanted to survive the storm. Some of us, man, we don't, I can't let it go. No, don't you know how much it costs? Don't you know? And they says, you know what? For their lives, they toss things out. How many of you know we're about that point right now? Jesus Christ could come at any moment, remember. And we need to get it right. Our hearts, we need to throw some things overboard. Amen. We need to toss some things overboard out of our hearts right now because Jesus is coming again soon and the rapture is going to take the church. Are you ready? You know what my wife says? She tells folks, you know, I want to be ready. I pray every day the sinner's prayer, man. I just want to be ready. I don't want to be wrong with anybody. I get my heart right every day. I say, amen, Sister Audrey. That's some good theology there. Get it right. You don't want to go to bed and mad at each other. You know, we kind of we inadvertently done that in our marriage. 
this year. I know Pastor Mark said he's, uh, he, he's way up there in marriage, amen. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm thinking, man, we're, we're, we're this year, what's this year, 2024? Minus, add, 24 years in September. It's gone by so fast. And we've inadvertently have done this. We have not gone to bed mad at each other. We're usually this laughing and mocking and laughing and more laughing when we're, and it's like, you can't even go to bed after that. It's just so, we're just hashing our day out. You got to let go of it because it's hindering what God wants to do in your life. They threw over precious cargo. They threw over everything. You got to let it go of the past, brother. The past, sister, you got to let it go. How many of some people, you know, they don't carry shovels to dig up your past. Some of them, they, they drive backhoes. Remember, you did this 20 years ago. Man, I will still for, never forget and not like you for it. You know, and backhoes, man. It's like, man, come on. It's been 20 years. Forgive and move on, man. Get it right. Because you don't want that festering and getting more disastrous in your life. There's some things you need to get a hold of. Rejection. You got to get it right with God. You feel rejected. You feel that. You feel like Leah. We have a Leah here tonight. Amen. Leah. Now, you know, I know it's God. Amen. We have one right here. Le- Leah. Leah. <laughs> Amen. Rejection. We got to get that taken care of in our life. I mean, no, Jesus Christ loves you. I didn't hear no amen. Come on now. Jesus Christ loves you. Do you know how I know? He, G, God sent him. God sent him for you and I. God loves you. Jesus loves you. He gave his life for you and I. So don't ever say to yourself, no one loves me. Ah! And more tears in your timmies. Amen. And uh, you know, Jesus loves you. Remember that. Your pastor loves you. Amen. No one loves me. You're lying. I know two people at least love you. Get it right. You got to shake off the violation. You got to shake off the discouragement. You got to shake it off. You can't keep going on. And you know what? One of the ways to do it is you got to pray. God, help me. God, help me. I know you're on the throne. God, I know. God, I know you have good plans for me. You need to trust his word. I know we say amen. I know we've heard this. Preacher, I've heard this before. I heard, is there something new you got? Let me tell you, are you really trusting the word of God? Are you praying? Crickets, crickets, crickets. Do you lay hold of God for yourself? Do you pray, God, give me strength. Help me. Help me to love my neighbor. Lord, you know what they've done. <laughs> help me love, Lord. I mean, oh, that's, that's something God has to help you with. Because I mean, oh, it doesn't come natural to love. And some people make it hard. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. It's tough. And that's where we say, God, help me to love. Help me to care. Help me, Lord, to share your word. I need you, Lord. And it's a good thing, just like Jesus said before we close, Matthew 4, 10 and 11. Jesus said to him, the tempter, away with you, Satan. Here's another good step in conquering discouragement. Sometimes you just got to get upset with the devil, amen? Amen. Get out of here, Satan. Maybe you can get a bumper sticker or a T-shirt. Not today, Satan. You know, with two exclamation points on there. Not today. We're not going to handle it today or next week or ever. You got to get a fighting bone in your body, amen? You got to say, that is it. I've had enough. And you need to put your foot down, amen, in life. And say, you know what, God? I'm going to serve you and nothing's going to stop me. I am going to live for God. You got to put your foot down. Say, no more, devil. I'm not giving up no more ground. I'm not going to do that no more. And we need to call on God. Amen. Lastly, as we close, I want to look at finishing our tasks. I know it doesn't look like it, but I've run two half marathons. Amen. Okay. All right. 
Don't believe me there. I thought everyone was going to be like, hey, man, that's a good job. Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Chris. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and no, it don't look like it. And I'm getting back into shape again, prime shape again. But I remember one thing about running. One thing you need to do, and I learned it early on, is the lighter you are, the better. Not just talking weight, amen. <laughs> that too. But your clothes. You got to have some good running clothes. How many of you know that? You can't just go out unless you're really sadistic. You go out with your sweater, you know, and you start running, you know. I remember I used to run in minus, uh, uh, Fahrenheit wise, it was like minus 10 degrees. I don't know what that is. Siri, what is minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius? She says here, minus 24 degrees Celsius. I would go out there running, man. I was like, oh, man, this is cool, man, running in Canada and taking pictures and send it to my fellow runners, you know, back home. You guys are wimps, man. And, and I got my, uh, my face is all a bunch of frost and everything all over it. Three years later, hey, man, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> But you had to have moisture-wicking clothes. I mean, you know, it's specific stuff. Light is better. And when you run, they always have these shoes that are in the ounces. Might as well be wearing sandals, man. They're so light. And it helps you what? Run and endure the race that is set before you. If you're going to make it, folks, if you're going to endure to the end, you've got to let go of something. You've got to run lightly. You gotta let go of some of those besetting sins. You gotta let go of some of those vipers that have latched onto you. You know what? You gotta let it go. It's it's infecting the way you're thinking. It's infecting your walk with God. It's infecting the relationship you have with others, and not in a good way either. You gotta let go of some things today, because people are watching. I love that scripture. It says here in our text as we close, it says here that the natives, verse number four, the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand and they said to each other, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice doesn't allow to live. But he shook it off into the fire and suffered no harm. And it says they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time, they saw no harm come to him, and they changed their minds. Let me tell you, people are watching you and how you're processing the upturns of life, the upheavals in life, the downturns, the downward spirals in life, the obstacles in life. People are watching you. The natives are watching you. Amen. <laughs> They're watching you. How are you processing this? When you're going through all kinds of reversals in your life, how are you doing it? Are you leaning on God? Are you seeking God? Or are you battling it in your own strength? People are watching. Your children, your co-workers, fellow brethren are watching. How are you dealing with this? I've heard it said over the years, you know what? Your, your faith is connected to so many folks, you don't realize it. Your faith, you know, it's, it's stirring others or it's causing others to stay away, you know. It, 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 does, it has an effect. Others are watching. And it says, as they saw Paul, you know, and they processed what he was doing, they were watching him for a while. You know what my pastor has said? He's been there for 30 some years now, 30, 91. Carry the one minus the five. He's been there for 31, uh, wait, 33 years, 32. I don't know. It's been a long flight today, 30 plus years. And he says, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to fall. I don't want to fail. I want to be faithful. Because I don't want to fail these people. I don't want to fail the Navajos. I want my impact to remain. I want uh, not just him. I want God to remain first in their lives. What God is doing, I don't want to violate that, he says. 
and I have grown the same way. I don't want that in my family or my church. I'm going to serve you, God, with everything in me. Everything that's besetting God, I, I tear it off right now. I get rid of it. And I do that every day. Some of y'all need to do it every hour. Oh, God, forgive me again. Quick. We're going to have an altar call. Let's bow our heads all over this place. Shake it off. Because Jesus is coming again. Shake it off. If we're going to make it to the end. You need to shake it off, folks. When we're young. We have a mishap on the basketball court or something. And they say, oh, man, my arm, my arm. And, and then the wise words of the uncle, shake it off, shake it off. Then get back in the game. Tonight, you need to shake some things off. There are things hindering you tonight in your ministry, possibly. You need to shake that off. Discouragement in all kinds of ways. You need to shake those things. Say, Lord, help me. God, you see my plight. God, you see my heart. You see what I'm dealing with. Since 2006, let me tell you, it's been a struggle many times. But I've always called on God. And I thank God for my faithful wife. She'll say, whatever you think, I'm here for you. Whatever you think, whatever you want to do, I'm here. Thank God. Before we do the altar call, the second one, I want to do first these call those here. Maybe you're online, you're not right with God. You're not right with God. Maybe you're backslidden. You once served God, but you've gone back into the world. The end is nigh. We need to be right with God. Where are you at with God? Where are you at? Would you make heaven your home? If you were to be honest with yourself, would you make heaven your home? Without a shadow of doubt, but if there's some doubt, you need to get right tonight. Yeah, you're not right with God. Or maybe you've never gotten right with God. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. I want you to lift your hand. Say, you know what, Pastor? I want to get right with God. Here's my hand. I want to be prayed with. I want to be led to the Lord in a relationship with the Lord. Here's my hand. Very quickly, every head is bowed. Everybody calls. Lift your hand. Say, that's me, Pastor. I need to get right. Here's my hand. Lift your hand all over this place. You need to get right with God. Lift your hand. We'll pray with you before we go. We'll pray with you. You're not right. You're back in the world. You're back in those things that beset you, that messed up your life. Deal with it tonight. Get right. Praise God. Let's all stand in this place. Church, I want you to come. This altar is open right now. Come and find a place to pray. God is dealing with you about some things that have latched on to you. Get it right tonight. Come and find a place to pray. Bring those things that are latched to you and begin to be set free at the altar with God. So, oh God, loosen me. Lord, set me free. God, deliver me. Oh Jesus, Lord, I plead the blood tonight. God, I will, Lord, be set free indeed, Jesus. I'm tired of carrying this burden. I'm tired of being rejected, feeling rejected. I'm tired of being the discouraged. God, I'm tired of fighting this ongoing, incessant battle. Help me, God. Help me tonight. God, rid me of this thorn on the side. God, deliver us this evening, we ask in Jesus' name. Father, begin to heal, Lord God. God, begin to mend right now hearts, Lord God. Begin to mend homes, relationships, God, between parents and children, between spouses, my God, between neighbors that we have. God, begin to loosen right now and set free, Jesus. Oh, Father, we need you tonight. Deliver, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Wonderful God, we need you. Touch these men. God and women, God, begin to do a work, a wonderful work of deliverance and healing. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, you are able. God, you are more than capable. Come on, church, call on his name. Begin to pray, begin to bring them before God. Oh, Lord, you are faithful. You are worthy, God. Of our praises, my Jesus. Holy, 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 Lord Jesus. Worthy, 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 my God, you are. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. Let's stand. I want to pray with you, church. If you're at the altar, stand. Why don't you stand with me tonight? God's going to begin to heal. God's going to begin to deliver. People have discouragement. You know, I really felt rejection. There's people who are going through rejection. You're feeling that. I want you to come. I want you to gather here. We'll come together closer. I can't help it. I, um, I was a teacher at one, day, one time. Everybody was in the back and it's all open. I said, move on up, move on up, you know. I won't bite. I won't spit. Come on up. Let's come together. And, and if you're wanting to respond to that, you know, you feel rejection. You feel that. I want you to come right now and let's pray. You know, Jesus loves you. This church loves you. Amen. Above all, Jesus loves you, man. It was a wonderful sight to see the young kids come. They're usually the first ones to hit the altar, man. Why is that? Wham! Oh, let our heart be like that. God, I need you. Amen. God is dealing with you. I want you to lift your hand all across this space. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you tonight. I'm praying right now. Lord, forgive me of all sin. Set me free completely from discouragement from rejection, the sin that easily besets me. Lord, I shake them all off right now in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying, help me to endure this race that is set before me. I want to make it, Lord, to the very end. Lord, I plead the blood. Help me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's praise God. Let's thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful Lord Jesus. Worthy, worthy. This one thing I want to do is pray for our sister here, here, here in the black. You can come or you can just stay right there. Yeah. I just want to pray for you. I just felt God just speak to me even before we started. I wasn't going to go on with rejection. But you know what? You're going through some bounce of rejection. Is that, is that hitting anywhere near? I have in the past. You have in the past? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you. I just wanted to tell you that God's love, God's joy is for real. And that you don't, you don't, you don't, need, a, you don't need to find it anywhere else. Yeah. God is pleased. Yeah. God I, is. I've come to that realization of actually Very good. that God loves me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we all need that. But I was just starting, you know, I just encourage you. Keep going for God. Yeah. Keep going for God. And, and you know, whatever's happened in the past, it's the past. Mm -hmm. Rejection. You know, I've gone through that. We've all gone through that. Yeah. You know, the way we look, the way we sound, the way we smell, you know, yeah. all these things. Yeah. But we know we're accepted by God. Yeah. And you know what? God is pleased by you. Mm -hmm. God is <laughs> pleased. And I just want to encourage you. Keep going for God, okay? Let's believe God for you. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Continue, God. Touch our sister, God. Continue. Help her to endure. God, give her the strength, Lord Jesus. Continue to be with her, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Thank you for letting me pray for you. Amen. Praise God. You can make your way back to your seats. But I appreciate you guys. God loves you, folks. God loves you. I don't come from the right background. Oh, whatever. We, we, we are all children of God. You're going through discouragement. God has a plan for you, folks. My brethren, God has a plan. Keep going for God. Man, since 2000, since 06, you know what? I kept going to God. Get on your knees, man. You're going through those bouts. My brothers, you know, keep going for God. God is going to help you. God's going to sustain you. You're wondering, where is he? He's there. He's there. You just gotta, you just gotta, gotta believe. Amen. God bless you. We're gonna have a wonderful time. Come on out tomorrow. And uh, you know, we're gonna be having a great time. And uh, so glad to be here with you. So thankful. Amen. Let's give God praise tonight as uh, Pastor Marks comes tonight. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. It's good to have you out tonight and tomorrow night again, same time. Uh, we're going to close in prayer. Also Sunday morning, 1030, and at night again, 630. And we're just thrilled. Our brother 
Derek comes uh, from such a tremendous uh, background of just amazing stuff, and I'm, I just feel such a linkage towards him, and we're just blessed to have him. Thank God for that. Don't miss tomorrow night. And also, when you leave, if the children could just, if you could watch your children, that they don't uh, mess with the poles or touch them at all. They, they need to set, and uh, it was just one of those things. We're right in the middle. They actually just poured that, uh, the, that cement. So if you can just keep your kids from that, that would be a great blessing. We're going to pray, and uh, afterwards, if you need personal prayer, uh, you can just come up, and Derek will pray for you. So, you know, I, I do a lot of that personal prayer, but maybe, you know, somebody, you know, you'd like somebody else to do it, uh, and he's just here for a short time. But If you need some personal prayer, just come on up, and he'll pray for you after the service, because we do. How many believe it's, it's, it's the power of prayer? Hallelujah. It's, we, we've seen so many miracles in this church, and we want to continue to do that. Father, thank you for this service. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, that we can shake things off. And I'm challenged to shake things off. Hallelujah. And I thank God that we can go on in this old world. Hallelujah. That we live in. God, thank you that we can have your joy in the midst of it. And everybody shout it.